Hey now everyone, it's Steve Severs for Bionic Buzz. We're here in Austin, Texas for Southwest by Southwest. This conference has so many cool things from amazing technology to movie screenings to tons of live music and so much more. Now before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Now let's go see who we can talk to. Cool, well welcome to Austin, Texas. Uh, uh, first off, tell us the synopsis for Switched Up, which premiered yesterday here at, at Southwest by Southwest. Uh, sure. Uh, so Switch Up is, uh, is a movie that's a kind of a rags to riches type of story, a uh, romantic comedy setting, and um, our lead character, uh, Christian De La Puente, uh, his role is um, Ricardo in the movie, which where he, uh, he goes from the highest point of his life to the lowest point of his life, and when he reaches his lows, um, he finds himself in a... Uh, in a homeless shelter in, all, in Brownsville, Texas. And um, this guy was living the Miami life before that. Oh. And so it's it's quite the extreme, but in, in the duration, there's a lot of comedy, a lot of big cast on this movie, and there's a lot of just interesting characters. Um, I play a character called Ty, who is the, actually, he runs the shelter. He's the, uh, he lives and breathes with the people at the shelter. And um, he's also, I guess, the, um, the 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 endearing part to the homeless just trying to connect those two you know within a comedy it's hard to talk about these sensitive topics like oh, that yeah. so he, he he's that vessel that just communicates what it's like to be poor and poverty and but still have a comedic you know relief to it so awesome and what's your character ah i play miami fbi agent mcintyre and i actually arrest christian for his uh wrongdoings and um, basically uh, come in and kind of save the day at the end when Marie got kidnapped and uh, that's that's my character. Very cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Good well, times. It definitely is a sensitive topic. I mean, I used to live in California. It's a big problem out there, even here in Austin. So uh, I guess talk about what does it mean to like have it premiere here, you know? You had it premiere yesterday, right? And what was that like? Yes, it made this world premiere yesterday. Um, you know, it was a great reception. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, it was the first time we both even seen the movie. We are we both live in California, and um, we don't have time to, like, we didn't, ha although we were on the movie in the beginning and, and overseeing everything from the from the beginning, we, did, we don't have time in our lives to oversee it throughout the process. Yeah. So we came and filmed our parts. We also made sure that crew and, um, and actors were taken care of, making sure that things were just, you know, the tone was set proper for the fu for the filming. Mm -hmm. But during our filming process, we we filmed right in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, yeah. uh, Brownsville, Texas, was on a shutdown, just like everywhere else in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so we dealt with all those curves. But with all that said, you know, the reception to the movie was was just beautiful. We, you know, I I. I I laughed, I cried. I thought it was just a, a beautiful journey of a movie. I actually forgot I was watching a movie. Oh, that's and that, that, that's a good experience. Yeah. No, yeah. It, it, it's it actually, it. It, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're, you're taken into this life and, and you're like, wow. And like, like Sal said, it was, a, it was an amazing journey going through watching uh, Christian's character just, you know, at, at the top of the mart and then just boom, it literally being homeless and you're like whoa you know what you think about that what would you do yeah. what would you do yeah. I mean you, you you know you're you're living high on the hog and then boom you're you're in a homeless shelter you're sleeping on a on a thrown away mattress with a box over you to stay warm you know you think about that and then there was a lot of a lot of like you said comedy relief in there it was really kind of cute um, yeah we you know you, you run through your emotions with with something like that and I thought that was it really sucked me in Mm -hmm. You know, which is what the movie should do. What a movie should do is get you involved in it. And I was. I was thoroughly involved there and very happy with, with the product that came out. Uh, speaking of comedy, you got, uh, um, what's his name from Chappelle shows in it? Oh, yeah. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? Yeah, all no, Darn yes, yeah. thank you. Do, do you have any scenes with him in yeah. at all? I love him. He's so funny. Darnell was great. Yeah. You know, he came in and he's a professional. Yeah. He spent uh, a couple of days, I think about a week in total on set. And, uh, yeah, him and I had a lot of fun scenes together. Um, just another uh, 
cameo player that could come in and bring some com- comedic timing to, to, the, to the tone because like I said especially a film like that when yeah, you're talking yeah. about heavy subjects you know I learned this a long time ago when I was doing Second City mm-hmm. you could talk about any very important topic you can as long as you're willing to sing it or make a comedy out of it and people will listen and you'll get their attention because if you try and drown them with the with the politics of of, 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 of the uh, the melodramatic stuff yeah. nobody wants to hear it. they tune it out but the minute they can get of a joke and a, yep. and a punchline they'll listen yeah exactly I also second city and yeah to, to come out with some kind of comic response with with like you said a heavy subject people accept that a little bit more than you know being more political about it yeah. you know being serious so yeah to make fun of it is is make light of it is a great thing you know with comedy um, it's so hot here today, but every time I watch Netflix Black Summer, it's always <laughs> freezing cold. What's it like shooting in those elements? You know, Netflix. Uh, well, you know, Netflix is, is obviously changed the game for all yeah. filmmakers. Uh, it's a, a distribution company slash original content creator yeah. slash streaming pioneer of the movie world, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Black Summer. That's like. A, you know, the walking dead on steroids, exactly. you know, like, yeah, the, I love it. like, so it was, it was an amazing experience. I, I thought that, um, uh, in the beginning I was like, ah, another zombie show, you know, here we go. You know, I'm not a big, I wasn't, wasn't a big fan of zombie shows because in every show you saw, they, those guys walked one mile an hour and, yeah. uh, you know, like night of the living dead <laughs> type stuff, you know, I was like, ah, I'm good. But then they were like, no, 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 this is a different show. These guys are like super, super bionic type, you know, uh, zombies. They'll, they're going to catch you. They're going to kill you. So, um, you know, we went up to Canada. We shot that for about about four to five months. Um, and uh, Jamie King was our lead uh, actress on that one. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, person. And um, it was just amazing. I mean, it, it's a beautiful it, backdrop for it. You filmed Alberta. Too, so I feel like it adds a lot to it. You know? Yeah, Alberta, Calgary, all the way up to Banff, the mountains of Banff. I mean, we shot that all over, and it was it was wild. And we were there so long that we got to deal with the extremes of the weather. I mean, you're just bringing up the weather. Yeah, so it exactly. was. I, when I got there, it was 100 degrees, uh, you know, and then it, by the time I finished shooting, it was like already in the single digits. Yeah. <laughs> and in my character, I would be like, you know, when people would come to me and say like, "Oh, Mr. Velez, you know, here, here's a jacket," so you, and I'd be like, "Get the hell out of here with that thing! <laughs> leave me in character, leave me be." Yeah, sure. So I was out there just like struggling <laughs> for Let no me reason. Freeze. Yeah, I'll I'm dying it. out here. Let me die. You know? Yeah, it was pretty wild. Uh, the method actor in you. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. It, it's like you know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be taken out of your element when yeah. you're when you're in the middle. Of, so, so, but the. But they have to. You have to just take a break in between. They have to reset cameras, and reset the shot, and blocking and all that shit. And when you have a, a show uh, of that magnitude, you have a lot of pieces, right? So mm-hmm. it could take a twenty-minute setup, right? You know, to change shots, you know. And um, and at twenty minutes, those poor assistants would come over like, "Would you like some coffee or some <laughs> hot chocolate, or or, 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 or you you want a granola cake? You know, something that you know." The union makes them do that, yeah, whatever, exactly. and they're trying to be kind, and I, and then here I am, like, get the hell out of here, <laughs> get the, kicking coffees out of their hand, you know, and um, they were like, oh, okay, Mr. Velez, are you are you improving? <laughs> I'm was, just trying to remain in character. Yeah, That's all it is. is. Yeah, just, I'm gonna die out here. You don't understand the process. It was so funny. It was funny. Well, uh, back to switched up. Um, you have a premiere. What's the latest next? Do you guys even know when? Is it you guys looking for distribution? Are you going through that whole route now, or? Oh man, I think it's basically um, going to distribute or trying to sell. Yeah. You know, uh, I haven't been in contact with Tara for for a day or two, and uh, I don't know what her plans are. But um, I, I would think that the next step would be to to sell it to someone and and get some generate some interest with what we're doing now, Absolutely. and hoping that you know somebody will pick it up. That's, that's the whole thing. All right. Well, where can we follow you both on social media so when you are allowed to talk about news for Switched Up? You know? Larry Kraska on Instagram. Mm-hmm. <laughs> on Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. I want to follow you. No, no. You are following I know, me. I know. <laughs> no, Sal Velez Jr. on Instagram. Also, I, uh, I, um, I don't think either one of us are big social media people. We're just, we're just doing it just because 
It's the easy way to contact somebody. We're probably yeah. so old school. We're like, just call me. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I am old school. I'm like, you, yeah. know, you want me? Call me. I'm just getting used to text, and yeah. I just learned Instagram <laughs> from my waitress. Yeah. Who's like, I think she's 24 years old, and then Cher, of course, is like guiding me through, and it, it's been, um, <laughs> it's been an experience going to social media. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not used. To, like I said, I call Sal. He picks up the phone. Sal That's calls it. me. I pick up the phone. You know, Simple. it's 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 so much easier that way. But you know, to get in touch with mass people, yeah, you yeah. know, you, you yeah. post and and everybody reads that stuff. That's so, the beauty of it. Yeah, and you know, I just gotta, you know, come into the 2020s now. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, the 80s are over. I, I guess. Is, like, here's a can and a string, and yeah. you get the other. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, nothing right now. Okay, I'll see you later on. All right, what's going on, Sal? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're still talking through pigeon here, and you know, um. But yeah, in the social media world, you know, that's the advancements of, of technology, right? Absolutely. I mean, just today, this Japanese band, this, this Japanese rock punk girl band oh, comes cool. up to me out of the blue sky. I was like, come to our show. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I was like, <laughs> I, 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 they couldn't even speak English, but they were, were here in, by, in South by Southwest, all the way from Japan, just to play their show. And I just thought that was amazing. So yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah, that's phenomenal. What a, what a what a big risk takers they are, you know? Yep. And these girls can't even speak English and they're maybe maybe in their early 20s. Wow. And I'm like, as a dad, I'd be like, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah. You ain't going cross country to play no rock and roll, cross you know? Cross country, cross the world. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so Good for them, though. Good for them. Absolutely. You gotta have what I love to... about this conference is got film, music, tech, it's got it all. It's, yeah, which is wonderful. I mean, I've been doing so many interviews. I, I would like to... Well, we walked the streets yesterday a little bit to find lunch, but that was, yeah, know. That was about it. You didn't get to actually, and I saw the Capitol today. Yes. Yeah, I was awesome. like, oh my gosh, that's right. right. Austin's the Capitol. Yeah. I saw it. <laughs> you know, that. do a little sightseeing in, yeah. very little. But no, it was fun. It was a good time. A lot of great people mm. had fun here. There's something real special about Texas. Absolutely. Um, you know, like, like we're speaking right now in Austin, the, uh, how inviting they are with, with, their, with their events here. But Brownsville was the same way, nice. you know. Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, every city in Texas, the whole state of Texas is just a special place. And um, so we we talk about it as filmmakers, you know, like what what places we want to bring our next films to, you know, because you shooting in California, you know, you're you're kind of th stretching it very thin because of you know everybody in California, you're dealing with climate, you're dealing with weather, you're dealing with a lot of traffic, a lot of people. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so you have to get out to these remote places that you can actually shoot something to get some quality work done. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why Kevin Costner goes and does Yellowstone and, and out in Montana and Wyoming, mm -hmm. you know, because you need some peace and quiet to do that, that kind of work, Absolutely. you know. Um, and I learned as a filmmaker, uh, as an actor in the beginning, but in, in now on, on both sides of the coin, I, I learned that sometimes you just gotta just take people out of their element you know, and um, so they can create some of the best work that you'll ever see, you know. Um, uh, and I think, you know, Texas is one of those states that provides all of that, you know. So we're looking forward to bringing some more films here. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Well, definitely. thank you both so much for taking your time to talk to me. And oh, thank you for taking the time to, oh, you're to interview us. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, man. It's been, you've been so kind, so generous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.